What's what's here? Is this does this lead to something? Oh, what? What? Did that Rhyperior just come out of the wall? Hi, I'm Mike, Pokétips Mike, and what a way to start off the episode. We're driving a car inside of a tree. Anyway, welcome back to episode number 13 of my Pokémon Sword and Pokémon Shield Extreme Randomizer Nuzlocke. Last time, we got our fifth gym badge, and surprisingly, we were able to go through the whole gym without anybody dying. Yeah, that's never happening again, so let's cherish that moment while we still can. And today, unfortunately, we can't stay inside of this tree forever. We're gonna be moving on, I believe, to Route 8 over here, because if we try going down to the bottom of this route, Team Yell yells at us. So let's go on to Route 8 and see what we've got going on here. Also, I'm a little scared of exploring this route, because right now, now I am using a weaker team than I was last time. We still have Dumbledore, we still have Goyle, we still have Patronus, but I swapped it up a little bit to bring Grindylo, Cedric, and our newest Pokemon, Tonks, onto the team, because I want to swap it up, you know? I want a little variety in the randomizer. So let's go ahead, let's explore Route 8, and see what our brand new encounter is, and I believe it's going to be a Rhyperior! There was no other Pokemon around there, so let's get it! Rhyperior! This is reminding me way back really early on in the randomizer when I had that beautiful Colossal on my team. And goodness gracious, am I scared of this thing right now. Dumbledore is absolutely gonna die if we stay in, so let's bring out Patronus. Now, I have to resist the temptation to use Giga Drain, because we know, I think we just fought against one of these things, we know if I go for Giga Drain, it's gonna one-shot this thing. So instead, I'm gonna weaken it with Double Kick. I know Double Kick is a super effective move, but I think Rhyperia's defense is really high, so we should be totally Totally fine using double kick. Yeah, see, look how little damage that did. That barely did anything. It's gonna do more to us with Rock Blast, which we resist, than our super effective move does to it. Okay, we got it into the red zone. That's very, very close to it fainting. Let's hope we don't faint here from a Rock Blast. Come on, Patronus, don't take five hits. Perfect. All right, let's heal up Patronus a little bit so we don't die, because this thing also has the move Stomp, which I believe will do enough damage to knock me out there. And let's hope we can catch this thing, because this thing is a monster at dealing some damage. All right, we're packing one Ultra Ball. I think now is absolutely the time to use it. Let's go for this Ultra Ball. If we could get this one immediately, that would be great. I don't know how hard it is to catch a Rhyperior. It's looking like it might be a little challenging. Ooh, great, it missed that move. Well, since something great just happened, let's try going for a great ball, and please, please, please get in this ball. We really, really can't afford this. Oh, uh, that's three. Nice. Good. Only took two balls. I was really thinking it was going to be much harder to catch than that. And thank you for the EXP donation. <laughs> I have no clue what to name this thing. I think I'll just name it Pomfrey after Madame Pomfrey from Harry Potter. What female rock monsters are there in Harry Potter? I want to use this thing. I'm not putting away Cedric. We always put away Cedric, so let's put away Grindylow for right now. And I think we're also going to run back to the center real quick before we explore more of Route 8. Oh, look at this! So not only, remember last episode how there was a Delta Venusaur on this route? Well, there's also Delta Ivysaur too! I actually think I like Delta Ivysaur a little bit better than Delta Venusaur. It looks really good. All right, back to Route 8, and my team right now is really reminding me of my Let's Go randomizer team. We have Rhydon's Evolved Form, Rhyperior, which we can't get around, unfortunately. And of course, we have Charizard again, so it's really feeling like my Let's Go team. Anyway, let's keep going. What is this over here? Let's get past all these things. Ah, uh, this route is another one that just puzzles me on which way to go. I think we have to go down this way. I remember the first time I came on this route, I got super, super, super lost. So let's hope we don't get too lost this time. Let's go fight you. You're tossing a little ball in your hand. I shall now closely examine the health of your Pokemon. This reminds me of that creepy artist that we fought a few episodes back, Dr. Joanna. Well, she looks a lot nicer, and leading off with an Arctozolt, well, I think there's no better time to try out Pomfrey than now. If it wants to go for an electric move because we have Dumbledore out, guess what? We're immune to it. And if it goes for a super effective ice move right now, our ability should make it a little bit weaker. Wild Charge, there we go, got the perfect switch in. And now let's hit this thing with the perfect move, we'll go for Drill Run. Water Shuriken! Hello, Greninja, how are you doing? Please don't hit me five times, though. That's doing a lot more damage than I would like, okay. Two times, that's good. Now please tell me it'll take it out with the drill run. I don't want to take another water shuriken. Oh, why? 
Why couldn't it just knock it out? This is probably a dumb move, but I'm gonna swap in the Patronus here because I don't want to heal up right now and then get hit five times by a water shuriken. Again, I always like to assume the worst case scenario is gonna happen to me. All right, good. Good, it is going for the Water Shuriken, which Patronus can take all day. And now, hopefully we'll be faster than it and we'll be able to finish it with a Giga Drain. Perfect. Alright, that didn't go as badly as I thought. That actually went really well. What, are we gonna be back at full health? Perfect. Like, nothing happens. I've seen a lot of weird moves in this randomizer. Lots of things using moves that I would never expect them to use, but the Water Shuriken Artisult... Oh no, Ginny! Why would you send out a Ludicolo? I'm still getting over the loss of my Ludicolo. But like I was saying, the Water Shuriken Arctizolt. Gotta be one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Okay, good. It's going for Rain Dance. I was actually kind of considering switching into Dumbledore right there to go for a super effective Air Slash. Now that I see the Rain Dance, I'm very happy that I didn't do that. Because that wouldn't be too great if it has a Water-type move. Future Sight. Ooh, wow, that might hurt a lot if we don't knock this thing out quickly. I think we're sealed in, though. I think we're locked into a victory right here, as long as we can just get another Giga Drain off on it next turn and nothing strange happens. And Moongeist Beam. Okay, Lunala! Ludicolo, Lunala, close enough, right? Okay! <laughs> You send out the Water Shuriken Arctizolt and you like, you want to see something else weird? I've got something else weird to show you. Moongeist Beam Ludicolo. Alright, bye bye. Alright, hopefully this is the way. Ooh, is that Corefish or is that- yeah, that's Corefish. Corefish would have been a nice Pokemon to catch. I don't think this is the way, but we get this item for coming over here, a shiny stone. Don't really have much of a use for that, and there's an Arctizolt. It's trying to get me, but it can't fly. As far as I know. Oh my gosh, wait a second. Is that a Mew over there? Is that Mew? Oh, look at that. Mew on Route 8. What a cute little Mew. I thought this route just had like Rhyperiors and Arctizolts. I was not expecting to see a wild Mew here. Look at that adorable little Pokemon. Out of all the mythicals, I think Mew is the cutest. Maybe Jirachi is a close second. All right, guys, you're going to hate me for this, but we're going to say bye bye to Mew now got away safely. What's, what's here? Is this, does this lead to something? Oh, what? What? Did that Rhyperior just come out of the wall? Okay, that was scary. We're getting away from this wall. That's what I get for observing the little cracks over there. Oh, Weavile, so cool. Uh, is this the way down here? It might be. But you know what? Let's fight you. I think I want to battle you. My live concert is open to all and you'll be attending. Why do these people on this route have such weird trainer encounter music? It makes me feel kind of uncomfortable. Well, Mandibuzz is definitely appropriate for this route, I'll give you that, so props to you for sticking to the theme. And once again, I'm very glad, actually, that we caught Pomfrey over here, because Pomfrey is actually really useful in these battles right now. Although I'm not liking being confused too much. What do you think, guys? Should we risk it? Let's go ahead and risk it. I don't really think Mandibuzz can do much to me, so we're gonna try going for a Rock Blast right here. Yeah, Feather Dance all you want. But let's see, can you get through those little ducks around your head? Yes, you can! Shoot those rocks! Wow, that does a lot less than I thought it would do. I really thought that was gonna do a lot more. Okay, that's a nice crit. I'll definitely give you that. Come on, and one more. One more knock it out. Oh, we got so close. We got so close to taking this out. Can we do it again? Can we do it again? Alright, I'm getting tired of the feather dance right now, lowering my attack so much. And now we're hurting ourselves. Come on, Pomfrey, just snap out of that confusion. How many times are you gonna dance with feathers? We get it, you wanna lower my attack a lot. Just let me go through, come on. Yes, Rock Blast, miss. Somebody wants to go through every episode and count how many times that I've missed, that would be great, thank you. All right, snap out of the confusion, hit the Rock Blast. This is gonna do absolutely nothing to it right now because I think our attack is as low as it can go. But good, we got three hits. I would have been super, super mad right there if we got two hits and we had to go through another turn of torture with this Mandibuzz right here. Goyle's at level 44, when did that happen? Goyle has been slowly leveling up in the back and I haven't even noticed. Oh, this is another really good matchup for us, but my attack! Just look how low my attack is! Even though we're rocking super effective attacks, it's not gonna do anything when our attack is that low. So let's bring out Dumbledore. And you're gonna- WHAT?! No, 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 no,
All right, we got to get Pomfrey back out in here, even though we're going to take a lot of damage from that crab hammer. But I think I know how we can do it safely. So we're going to go ahead. This is a nutty play. This is the craziest play. And if it goes for a flying type move and knocks me out right now, well, I deserve it. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I had a feeling it would go for crab hammer there if I swapped into Patronus, and we were able to take it just fine. Now let's bring out Pomfrey, and hopefully this thing goes for a flying type attack or a normal type attack. Flying would be great though. Go for something flying. Drill pack. All right. We got Pomfrey in safely. I'm just very afraid of that crab hammer. Now I know Crab Hammer is quad super effective against Pomfrey right now, and that is scaring me a little bit. But I believe because of its ability, which weakens super effective hits, and its high defense, we should be able to take one and knock it out with Rock Blast. So we're going all in. This is a huge risk right now, and we just gotta hope. Nice, Pomfrey. Wonderful. Because if you can't take this thing out, then I'm not really sure how we can take this thing out. We just need a few more hits with that Rock Blast. And, okay, good. Oh my gosh. That was so scary. That thing had answers for everything on my team. Wow. I'm starting to regret getting into this optional battle right here, but we got it. We beat Musician Charles. If I see another- Oh! oh get away from me! These things are just straight up walking through the wall! What on this route normally can walk through the wall? I don't remember exactly, but look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh, is that not terrifying to you? Oh! Okay, whoa! Whoa, okay, we're going up the ladder. Freeze, don't move, and let's get out of here. I've had enough of that nonsense. What is this? Oh, are these double? No, we are not fighting them. You know how I feel about double battles. We don't do those if we can avoid them. Is this a new route? Route 8? Oh, wait, no. Does this count as a new area? I'm not sure, actually. It's still Route 8, it's completely different, it's snowy over here, and it had a little subtext. And let's just go forward and see what pops up over here. Squirtle! As far as I know, this is still the same Route 8, so I'm not gonna let myself catch this Squirtle. Would be nice to have, though. I really, really would like to have another Kanto starter on the team. Level 43 Squirtle, that's insane. And Butterfree over here, you must be cold, buddy. Yeah, that's why it disappeared. We've got Meowth, ooh, Flygon. This area has some pretty cool Pokemon too. Togekiss, Inkay, I don't know, it's gonna be hard to top that Mew that was on Route 8 earlier, but these are some pretty cool Pokemon too. There's a happy little policeman over there, I'm not gonna fight you. We've already had enough optional battles today, and I'm definitely regretting doing a few of them. So let's go over here and welcome ourselves to Sir Chester. Gym number six. Remember what it took like five episodes to get to our first gym? And now it feels like we're just going gym, 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 gym. No breaks in between. Now, before we even think about going to the gym, there's a few things I want to do. First off, I want to see if we can remember any good moves on our Pokemon here. Yeah, like Hammer Arm. Hammer Arm is a good move for Rhyperior. Helioptile, on the other hand, does not really get that many good relearn moves. I guess I'll just give it Bulldoze because we need a little variety in this moveset. And that's about it for relearn moves. Now, the next thing I want to do is go get the Sunstone to evolve Helioptile. So that means we gotta go back to the wild area and tempt ourselves with many Pokemon species that we can't catch. Alright, what's gonna pop up today that we can't catch? Ooh, wow. A flying Delta Cinderace right there. And where is it? Is it here? No, that's the Moonstone. Here it is. Okay, perfect. So now let's go ahead and use this thing on Tonks. As much as I like the baby form, we really need a Heliolisk if we want to do anything with this in battle. And there it is. Congratulations, your Tonks evolved into a Heliolisk. Also, I'm actually pretty sure we could go to Route 9 right now as well, so let's do that before we go to the gym. This should lead us to Route 9, yeah, right? Okay, perfect. So whatever pops up first is our encounter. Oh, wait, is that a fishing spot? Can we actually fish over here? I think that'll be a fun way to do it. We usually don't fish. Yeah, let's go ahead and see what we get out of the water over here. I hope it's something crazy. I love seeing things that shouldn't live underwater, but end up there anyway. Like this thing, Pharaoh Seed, should absolutely not be underwater. Ferrothorn would actually be a pretty cool Pokemon to have. I know it's very defensive, so let's go ahead, let's try a Quick Ball on this thing. I don't feel threatened staying in by a Pharaoh Seed at all, so let's go ahead and see if this works on the first turn. And nice, we got him! That was very easy! 
I think we'll name her Sprout after Professor Sprout. I think that's a good name. And we're not gonna put her on the team right now. I don't really feel like training up a Pharaoh Seed, but I could absolutely see... Oh, nice. Thank you for the item. I can absolutely see myself using this thing in the future. All right, my friends. So now that we caught a few new Pokemon, I think we're ready to go ahead and take on our sixth gym. I gave my Pokemon some items like the King's Rock on Dumbledore because I really hope that with Air Slash we can get to see some nice flinches. And I'm also bringing Bellatrix back onto the team because I feel like Bellatrix and Tonks will work really well together. This might be dumb going in with a few low-leveled Pokemon like I know Tonks and Cedric are both a little lower than they should be right now, but you know what? We're just gonna go for it. I like a little bit of a challenge. And speaking of challenge, Hop's not looking too good. Ah, I lost. It all went to pot. There must have been something wrong with my strategy, but I did just what I've seen Lee do in battles. I've got to figure out what to put on my team once and for all, and no more of this doubting. I'm feeling pretty bad for Hop. He started off pretty strong, he won our first ever battle, but ever since then, he's been kind of going downhill and beating himself up. But we don't have any time to focus on that because we're about to take on our sixth gym. Oh yeah, this is the one where we kind of use the little item finder thing and we try to avoid falling into the pits. This is another little fun one. I'm really, really bad at it though. So you're probably going to see me fall down these holes at least maybe, I want to say three times. Can you hear me? Stay calm and move forward. All right, Poketips, we can do this. And I don't think it's that way. Yeah, the bigger the circles get, that definitely means there's a hole there that we could fall down in. So I think we gotta go around this way, and will this lead us over here? Good. Now, I guess we are gonna have to fight this trainer. I don't really mind fighting a few gym trainers today, because again, like I said, a few of my Pokemon on the team right now are kind of low-leveled, so if we could get some more extra XP in this battle before we actually go fight the gym leader, that'll work out pretty well for us. Ooh, Reuniclus. Now this is why I like leading off with Tonks. And this is why I brought Bellatrix back as well. Because now, we could do my favorite combo ever. We could go Volt Switch, do a little damage to a Pokemon, swap out, and then bring in something like Bellatrix that has super effective moves against these things. When I used to battle competitively a few years ago, I used to love moves like Volt Switch, U-Turn, anything that would like give me the momentum, do a little bit of damage, and then swap me out. Parting Shot, that's a new move in Gen 8, that's another one that really works well with this strategy. I don't know if anybody on my team can get Parting Shot, but I love that move. Nice, Tonks is already leveling up. That's what I want to see. Ooh, a big bad Tyranitar, though. That is not what I want to see. Now, I'm kind of debating on what I want to do here. I think... I know Rock is good against Bug, but I think we should be okay to get one Razor Shell in. Let's go ahead and try a Razor Shell. If this Tyranitar... Ooh, Obstruct. Using Obstacoon's move right there. So this actually isn't going to be too good for us. And wait, when we hit into Obstruct, that lowers our defense, right? Yeah, okay, good, look at me, I'm finally starting to remember what these Gen 8 moves do. Alright, so in that case, I'm absolutely gonna swap out. I was okay with taking a rock move when my defense was at its normal level, but when it's lowered, let's say this thing is Stone Edge, it might just straight up kill Bellatrix. And again, I like Bellatrix. Wild Charge... Yeah, that would have done a lot of damage too. We're also weak to electricity. Now this might be like the one scenario where Double Kick is actually going to be the strongest move in my arsenal right now. We'll actually go for this. I think it's quad super effective against Tyranitar. Still kind of a weak move though because Double Kick by itself is not really that strong. And Tyranitar's defense is just silly high. Ooh, Slash. Okay, good. We could take that. Not like in the Sandstorm damage though. Ooh, that guy looks so creepy. All right, we gotta double kick this thing. And get the wait. Oh, oh my gosh, I got scared for a second. I'm like, why is it going faster than us? I was afraid of it having like some sort of priority move that was gonna kill us right there because we are getting pretty low on health. That obstruct actually kind of threw things off. I'm gonna go for a hyper potion here now on Patronus, and I'm hoping Slash doesn't do too much damage. Let's see. Yeah, it is going for Slash again. How much is this gonna do? Wow. Wow, that does a crazy amount of damage. Well, now the Sandstorm is over, so that's a good thing, right? And I'm 99% sure as long as we get a double kick off, it'll kill the Tyranitar. So we should be good to go. Perfect. Okay. Maybe I made a mistake even last turn going for the Hyper Potion. I'm not really sure why I did that. Whatever, we won the battle. We got lots of XP. Tyranitar is great for giving out XP. And ooh, Liquidation. Yeah, I'll take that over Razor Shell. It's a little bit of an upgrade, so why not? Will we fall into a hole if we go this way? I think... Wait, wait, where is it? Where is it? I'm sensing something. My spider sense is tingling. No, I think this whole way is trapped. We gotta go... Whoop! 
Is this way trap too? I guess... Whoa! Ah, oh, there it is. I told you I was going to fall into a hole at some point. I guess we have to go around this way. And then... Okay, this is just a nice easy path. Perfect. Well, we passed the first part. There were lots of holes. I'm actually impressed we managed to dodge all those. But from what I remember, it only gets a lot worse here. I think... I think we could go over here. Yeah, this platform looks safe. We get to fight another trainer, though. Again, that's okay. We get some XP. I'm all right with it. Gym Challenger. I'll freeze you and your Pokemon solid and shatter you into tiny pieces. Why are you so aggressive? So freeze me and my Pokemon and shatter us into tiny pieces. You know what? Now, it's personal. Again, here's Revolt Switch comes in handy. Not the best matchup, but that's okay. Tonks will just get out of here, do a little bit of damage, and I think we're gonna go right back into Bellatrix again. Tonks into Bellatrix. That's the true combo right there. Ingrain. Okay, that's all right. You want to heal up some HP and not be able to swap out? Be my guest. What do you think? Is first impression going to go ahead and one-shot this thing? I think so. I think so. That's right, Bellatrix. Amazing job. I love Golisiopod. It's such an amazing Pokemon. Cedric's learning Psychic. Cedric might actually be useful now. Now, maybe if you level up some more, I might actually get to use you in the gym battle. I'm not sure what level. Ooh. Uh, do I want to stay in against this thing? I actually don't know. I think I'll try Liquidation again. We should be faster than a Colossal, right? And if we could just one-shot this thing, that would be the dream come true. Oh, perfect. Good. Again, I was really scared of a Rock-type move killing me right there, but Bellatrix has got it. Now, I'm not sure what level the Gym Leader is going to be. I think they normally use Pokemon around, like, level 41 or so, and we have a level booster on there, so I'm expecting them to be, like, maybe around level 46 or so. Why not? Let's fight you as well, so we can hopefully get some more levels before we fight the Gym Leader, because, again, if they're going to be level 46, we do need a few more levels. Gym Trainer Alexander. Alexander is such a nice name. And hey... We finally have a good Pokemon for Togekiss! I really wish Tonks had a bit more of a diverse moveset. I feel like I could get some, like, TMs or TRs. I might go back to the wild area, run around and get a whole bunch of Watts so I could get some good TMs to teach Tonks. Because right now, Tonks is kind of like a one-trick pony. It knows electric moves, it also has Bulldoze just because... And that's about it. I am liking this one, though. Because I believe we'll get some health back after using this move, right? Yeah, that's actually really nice! Well, let's absorb a little bit more health back, and hopefully the second Pokemon is something like a Gyarados, something that we could just easily one-shot and get back to full health as well. Cedric's getting to 36, and Zatu! We can handle a Zatu. Yeah, I'll definitely go for the charge here once again. Ooh, it's faster than me. That's actually slightly scary. And we're swapping abilities. I don't really think that's gonna matter that much right here. Oh my gosh, did we just straight one shot the Zatu? Oh, that's a crit. That's why. I knew it was a super effective move, but that move isn't really that strong. It's not one shot a Zatu strong. That was a really nice crit. Now enter a world of silver snow. Is this it? Is this the gym leader? Trust in yourself and push forward. Wait, is this just totally fogged up? Oh my gosh, it's like we have to be tough from Avatar. We can't see, we just have to sense the way. Hang on. Here's a platform. Nice, safe platform. We made it a little bit of the way. What's over here? Are there trainers in this area? Yes, there are. I don't know where the trainer is. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there they are. I could just barely see him. It's one of those creepy looking guys. Oh, he found me. Gym trainer Micah. That's another one with a really weird cry. Woo! Hmm, I guess I'll just go ahead and try fighting this one with Tonks. We'll go for Thunderbolt, our strongest move. I was also thinking, I know it can relearn Discharge and it can learn Thunder. Both of them have their merits. Thunder is just really strong, but it misses like crazy. And Discharge is a little bit weaker than Thunderbolt, but it has, I believe, a 30% chance to paralyze, which can be pretty handy. Solar Blade. I think there's a chance Thunderbolt might just kill it right here, so I'll go for Thunderbolt instead of the Volt Switch. I could have Volt Switched into Dumbledore, but yeah, that, that's fine. We didn't need to do that. But yeah, both of its other relearnable electric moves have some merit. I just think this moveset right now is really good. And Darmanitan, wow, the classic one. Again, you don't really see that that much in Sword and Shield. Well, for once, let's go for our other move, Bulldoze, but overheats. That might hurt. No, that actually doesn't hurt. I'm actually really surprised. Oh, wait, isn't Darmanitan's physical attack way higher than the special attack? That's probably why. And oh my gosh, that did nothing. Why do we even know Bulldoze if it does that little damage? All right, forget this. We're going to Volt Switch out now. I thought the Bulldoze would at least do something to it. 
Get out here, Pomfrey. Ooh, overheats. That'll do. Call it 10 damage. Oh, look at me. I should go play the lottery or not. Don't play the lottery. You're always going to lose. All right, Pomfrey. Give that Darmanitan the drill. <laughs> That is such a great fainting animation. It just throws its hands up in the air. Ah, save me! But I need some saving right now. I really don't know where to go. Okay, well, that's ice, so we can't walk through the ice. I have a Charizard on my team. Why can't I just send my Charizard out of its ball and, like, fly over this whole mess? Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to go. Wait, is this it right here? Did I make it to the platform? Oh, somehow we did. Oh, wait, no, we're not done yet. Is it straight? No, it's not straight. It's usually on this side. Oh, okay, perfect. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But wow, that was really, really long. Splendid, you've done well. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go ahead, heal up the team, and let's go on in against gym leader number six. And you know what? Cedric's the only one not holding an item. So, Cedric, I'll give you the Orenberry. Again, I'm not planning on using Cedric in this battle because Cedric is so low leveled, but just in case, maybe that Orenberry will matter. So yeah, we're just going to go in against this gym leader with the same order that we've been going through with the rest of the trainers. It's been working so far, so I really don't see why it wouldn't work against the leader. I am kind of scared of her Pokemon just being so much higher level than mine and overpowering me that way, but I think we should be Great. I'm Melanie. Alrighty, I suppose we should get started. You won't be able to escape when I freeze you solid. And after that, well, you'll see. I think you'll find my battle style is quite severe. What is it with everybody in this gym and wanting to freeze us solid? Under the ice, did they just have like a collection of frozen Pokemon trainers that lost? <laughs> Alright, ooh, here we go. Another Darmanitan. Another fire type Darmanitan. Well, since we literally just fought against one of these things, I think I know how to take it out. But yeah, you can see that level jump in effect right there. So we're gonna Volt Switch, and we're gonna go right into our brand new buddy in this episode's MVP, Pomfrey. Let's hope you also go for Overheat as well. That would be fantastic. Fire Lash. Nope, this is the fire move I don't like. Well, let's try a Drill Run here. See what this thing wants to go. Oh my gosh, Meteor Assault. No, 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 please don't kill. Don't kill. We could take this, right? We could... Pumphrey! Critical hit. Of course. Of course. You know, I just said, this episode's MVP, so of course, it's only fitting that we lose the Pokemon that I was hyping up the most. Ugh, that's so annoying. So annoying. I really feel like if that wasn't a critical hit, we could have probably survived at like one or two health. Ah, <sighs> rest in peace, Pomfrey. Gone way too soon. I really enjoyed having that Rhyperior on the team. Well, liquidate this thing, Bellatrix. Get it out of here. Evil Darmanitan. Haha, <laughs> how do you like getting that crit? I don't think that crit mattered, but at least that's a little bit of revenge. Ooh, Gengar. Is that a shiny Gengar? Its colors look kind of different. Yes, that was a very long delay. Kind of had just wait in anticipation to see if that was shiny or not. Well, I'm thinking the strat right here is go for Sucker Punch. Super effective, and it's going to go first as long as this thing wants to attack me. It does want to attack me. Let's see what it was going for here. Moongeist Beam, another one! Now, that is going to swap Bellatrix out, unfortunately. This is where Emergency Exit kind of backfires on me. Moon Geist Beam is actually a really terrifying move on a Gengar. And I think, actually, Cedric might work out here. Because Gengar can't go for any Ghost-type moves, we just got the move Psychic, and it's at low enough health where I think we should be able to knock it out with a Psychic. So come on, Cedric, do some work here. Sludge Wave. That won't kill us. That won't kill- 5 HP! Hey, the Orenberry's coming in handy! <laughs> I knew it was good to give this thing the Orenberry. Alright, Cedric, finish it up! Finish it up! Perfect. Oh my gosh, Cedric's actually putting in some work in this battle. I was not planning on using Cedric at all. And you got a very well-deserved level up there to 37. Alright, Incineroar! I'm a little worried right now. I'm a little worried because I want to bring out Dumbledore. I'm just afraid if it goes for a strong dark move, it might do a lot of damage to Dumbledore and put us into a bad spot. So, like, I'm almost considering sacrificing Cedric right here, but I don't want to do that. Because what if it doesn't go for a dark move? If it doesn't go for a dark move, we can bring out this guy right here, Dumbledore, and we should be okay. It all depends. What dark move are you going to go for right here? Ex oh my gosh! 
No, that's not a good scenario for us. All right, I'm kind of bamboozled on what to do right now. I did not want to see a cell rock from that Incineroar. So now this Incineroar is looking like a huge problem for us right now. A huge, huge problem. So we got to bring Tonks in again. I think I'm going to go for Parabolic Charge right here to heal up some health and do some damage to this Incineroar. I kind of want to just use potions, but I don't know. I don't know. Okay, good. We are faster than it. I was like 100% sure we were faster than it, but just in the off chance we weren't, that would have been a mess. The Shell Bell and Healing combo is going to be pretty nice here. And depending on what it does to us now, Jaw Lock? Huh? Wait. Huh? Oh gosh, are we going to lose this battle? Now we're in trouble. Now we're in a lot of trouble. Three of my Pokemon are at low health. Patronus is the only one at full health right now, but Patronus is weak to it if his fire moves. We've got to bring out Patronus right now, and then we have to go for the Dynamax. This is what we have to do right now. Dynamax, Max Knuckle. Ah, oh, Max Knuckle is absolutely not going to kill, but we've just got to try. This is not a good situation at all. I know it's not going to kill us, but I'm now I'm kind of afraid because we're using our Dynamax extremely early in this battle, which usually is not a good sign. Bet you haven't seen this before. Dynamax Patronus. 208 HP. Nice. That does make me feel a little comfortable about it doing something dangerous to us. I believe this is going to be a two-hit KO. This is not going to just straight up kill it right now. The attack boost is overall going to be all right. Sunny Day. That's scary if our team has another Fire-type Pokémon. These Max Knuckles are gonna be good, because now we're at plus two attack. Just the only way for us to really win this battle right now is for us to go the rest of the battle with Patronus. If they send out something that makes Patronus swap out, we are in trouble. But Patronus has a very good moveset, where it can cover a lot of options. Flygon! And because I think I'm going to be in here with Patronus for the long run, I'm going to go for Max Steel Spike right now. I don't even care about the damage. I just want to get my defense boosted up. Because, yeah, look how much that Dragon Claw did. Look how much that Dragon Claw did to us right now. Once we lose Dynamax, that's it. We're done there. So we need this defense boost. All right, Dynamax is over. Party's over right now. Yeah, our attack stat is a lot higher than our special attack stat right now because we're boosted up two stages. So double kick's probably our best option. If it goes for Dragon Claw again, that's going to get us low, but it shouldn't kill us unless it's a crit. Yeah, pretty low. So it turns out... Is this going to knock it out? Is this going to knock it out? We need it to knock it out. Oh, no. Like I was saying, though, it turns out we did really need that defense boost from the Max Steel Strike. I'm not sure, though, about Patronus finishing this battle. How much does Dragon Claw do right now? Okay, we can work with that. We're gonna be low. We're gonna go for Giga Drain to finish this thing off. We're gonna be low. Ooh, that's really low. That's really, really low. Oh gosh, I'm not liking this. We only got 4 HP back from the Giga Drain. We are getting a level now, though, so our stats are gonna get a little higher. But man, we are in a tough spot. Milotic! That's a good sign right there. All right, we're very low on health right now, so I'm going to heal up Patronus with a Hyper Potion, even though we have Giga Drain. I just want to make sure that Patronus survives right here. Let's just see what this thing's going to do to us. Haze. Oh, well, there goes the stat boosts. That's kind of annoying, but whatever. And right here, this might be a silly decision, but I'm going to use my last Hyper Potion on Bellatrix right now. So we're all done with our potions, but I think that's the smart overall move, because it looks like this Milotic... I'm kind of regretting now using a Hyper Potion on Patronus. I thought this Milotic was going to attack me. But I think we should be able to get through this Milotic and still be at full health or close enough to it. Yeah, we look safe against this thing. I was kind of worried about it having something stronger, but this Milotic is looking free. So depending on what their last Pokemon is really determines how this battle goes right now. Let's Giga Drain. I don't think that's going to bring us back up to full, but we should at least be around like 130 health, I think. 129. We were off by one point. And now, the fate of this battle depends on what her last Pokemon is. We have to fight against a Gigantamax Pokemon right now. And we don't have our option to Dynamax anymore. Eevee! 
We might see something crazy right here. It might be able to knock out Patronus, but I think we might have somehow just won this battle. Ugh. Fingers crossed. Let's hope this goes well. Because once the Gigantamax is over, we're definitely not at a risk from this thing. Liking that we're back at full health, that's good. It's going for G-Max Cuddle. I don't want to get cuddled by Eevee. I really don't want to get cuddled by Eevee. You know, it's actually a really good thing right now that Patronus does not have a gender, because otherwise, I believe G-Max Cuddle infatuates the opponent. So we'd have like a 50-50 chance of being able to attack this thing right now. Aw, Eevee is so cute. I'm so glad that she had a G-Max Eevee as her last Pokemon rather than something else. And I'm only going for Giga Drain right now instead of Double Kick because I believe that I just want to heal. I just want to heal. We're all out of potions right now, so we need to be able to stall out this. And after this last G-Max Cuddle, it's over. Now we're just back to a regular Eevee. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We can win this battle right now. I played it very safe near the end, and I think that's what's won us the battle. That Incineroar, I definitely made the right choice bringing in this guy against the Incineroar. It was definitely a wild play, because if that Incineroar had a crazy Fire-type move, we would have been done. But luckily, for some reason, it decided to go for Sunny Day instead of some other moves. Although, I was shocked when we brought in Dumbledore, and it had Excel Rock and nearly one-shot me. Oh, wow, and Cedric getting the 39. Cedric did a great job this battle. Despite being so under-leveled, it managed to take out that Gengar. Like I said in the beginning, we are never having another gym battle where we don't lose a Pokemon. We lost two in this gym. But we earned our sixth gym badge, and we can catch Pokemon up to level 50, so you know what that means. We just got two more gym badges, so we can go back to the wild area next time and get even more Pokemon. I absolutely cannot wait to do that, but oh my gosh... The two Pokemon we went out of our way this episode to, like, train up and raise were the two that fainted. Tonks and poor Pomfrey. Well, you guys didn't really have much of a time to shine, but while we had you, you two both worked your hardest and did a fantastic job, and you helped us a lot through this episode, so thank you both. Thank you so much for watching this wild episode of my Pokemon Sword and Shield Extreme Randomizer Nuzlocke. Woo! That gym battle looked hopeless for a moment, but luckily we were able to turn it around and win. Two more badges to go. I'll see you next time.